Hey everyone, uh, so this is my first time doing uh, these types of videos, these uh, two-lane game uh, film reviews. Um, so let me know in the comments or what, what your thoughts are about this. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these, uh, you know, if there's anything I can improve upon, just let me know. Uh, but for now, uh, I just wanted to show you guys this quick uh, game film review, uh, some, some spots on offense and defense where I think we can improve ahead of the UCF game tomorrow and where I think kind of our biggest weaknesses lie with this team. Uh, you know, this team is at kind of a disappointing two and three record right now. Two very winnable games against Navy and, well, really all of them are winnable. Navy, Houston, and SMU, all of our losses were very winnable. Um, and there were just a lot of mistakes and mishaps happening. So I just kind of wanted to go through some of the things that I saw in this SMU game, uh, some highlights and some lowlights as well, starting with, uh, with our opening play here. So what we have here is we have Pratt in the empty formation, which means exactly as it sounds, it's an empty formation. There is no one around Pratt. It's just him. And there are five receivers out wide, two at the bottom of the screen here, and three up here and with this kind of play in this kind of formation 95 percent of the time it's going to be a pass the defense isn't really left guessing here they pretty much know it's going to be a pass you know you have no running back here who who, who's a, who can be a runner you don't have an extra blocker you know as it uh, on the offensive line like a tight end or a fullback or something you you pretty much know it's going to be a pass and that's what smu is thinking as well so what SMU is showing here is a cover two man, which means that each two lane receiver is being covered by an SMU defender here, 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 and here. And they have two safeties deep playing the two deep zones of the field. So this is a pretty basic defensive coverage. And this is probably what Michael Pratt is thinking. He's seeing these two deep safeties. He's seeing these, these corners uh, playing and, and linebackers playing tighter coverage. And so that's probably what he's thinking. And he probably has no idea that this guy right here, this linebacker number 50, is just going to blitz off the edge and just explode this play, whatever it was supposed to be. So I'm just going to show that to you guys right now. Um, number 50, top of your screen right here, just going to blast by our, our, our left tackle completely unblocked and crack it sacked for an eight-yard loss. Now, this play was doomed from the start. Um... If we had a running back back here, he probably could have picked up the blitz and Pratt could have made an easy completion to this slot guy right here who runs a quick curl route. Uh, that's probably what Will Hall was intending. Uh, however, this, this just had no chance of happening. And even if that did happen, number 97 here just completely puts our uh, right tackle onto the ground and, and Pr Pratt just gets pressured from all angles. So I, I really can't blame Pratt here. This is not his fault. This was just more of a a, a missed call on offense. Uh, when you have five guys against, a, a, or a, I'm sorry, a five-man rush against an empty backfield, I mean, 90% of the time, they're either going to, you know, they're, they're going to hurry the quarterback or, or get a sack. And that's exactly what happened here. So, so when we're playing UCF, I think we need to keep some backs in the backfield to keep the threat of the running game open and alive and to, to keep them guessing because they're, and I'll show you this later in, in our game, in the rest of the game film, we have a couple of really great play action passes, um, that happen because we were a very good running team. We're able to dupe the other team into thinking we're running the ball for, for some good gains in the air. Uh, now, now, the next thing I want to show you guys is was actually uh, us on defense. And we just make a really good play here. So what's going to happen is SMU uh, is coming out with this like little bunch formation right here, which is, you know, three wide receivers right next to each other. There's a back here, and there's a guy at the very top of the screen. And what Tulane is going to call here is, is uh, zone coverage. And so these linebackers here, are going to drop into coverage. This safety, uh, Chase Kirshen, he's going to be in coverage as well. Same with these guys. And I 
really like this play call against this offense, this this pass heavy offense, um, because when, well, I'll let, let me I'll just stop talking and, and I'll just show you what happens. We actually almost get a pick here, so ball is snapped. Bouchelle gets it. He wants to target this guy. He runs right past Chase Kirshen, but he's staying in his zone. He's gonna he's gonna be on this guy. And our linebacker here, number 33, nearly picks the ball right off of his fingertips. And it's it's exactly because we were in that zone coverage. He's covering a, this receiver underneath. And so at that point, he has great coverage to make an awesome defensive play. And that's exactly what he does. He uh he didn't get the pick, but he did force an incompletion. And and that was just a really heads up play by number 33 there. And and Tulane, when we when we run this this zone coverage, uh Throughout the game, there are multiple instances where we make some great plays in zone coverage just simply because we have guys that are on top and underneath uh, that make, make these throws and make these plays very difficult for SMU to execute. Now, the next thing I want to highlight is the play right after this on defense, which is just a complete breakdown and disaster, in my opinion. So after that great First down and completion. Now we're in a man coverage. So we give them the same look as previously. We have two linebackers here. You know, it's it's a nickel defense. And what's going to happen is this linebacker is just going to straight up blitz Bouchelle. And this linebacker is going to cover the running back here. So since we're not playing in zone coverage, we have no one covering the middle of the field right here. And there is no underneath coverage. So when you run this kind of man coverage, you are basically putting all the uh, all the responsibility on your corners and your safeties who are covering individual men to to make a play. And and that's unfortunately that is not what happens here. Uh, the receiver at the very top of the screen, you can't see him. He just kind of runs this crossing route or uh, I'm sorry, not a crossing route, like a little curl route. And, I mean, he breaks away for a huge com completion. And, and, I mean, this guy was a beast all game. He's he's very athletic. Um, Granson, yeah, I guess that's his name. <laughs> he was having a great game in the air. Uh, he was lining up at wide receiver, tight end, running back. I mean, this guy is great. Um, but I truly think if we were in that zone coverage we were in before and we had a man underneath here to defend that pass, I truly think this probably would have been another incompletion. However, what happened here was, since these linebackers are over here, look, I mean, look at all this open space. So he's going to run this quick cut here, um, and he's going to beat our DB, who, who, who thought he was running a deep route, but he actually just cuts. And he gets easy completion. And, and these are the, like I said, these are the kind of uh, uh, calls we can't make against UCF. I think we're going to need to play more zone coverage and have some more men deeper in the field. Um, and even if we do allow some short, quick completions because of that, um, I really think bend, don't break is better than break, don't bend, <laughs> if, if you know what I mean. Uh, I think we need to take the bend, don't break philosophy pretty seriously in this next game against UCF. Because uh, when you play man coverage, you allow a lot more of those bigger ch you know, chunks of yardage to be given up, and, and that's exactly what happened there. Um, one more thing I wanted to talk about was just the, the play-action game that we have going. Uh, there, there was a lot more in this film I could talk about. However, I did just want to kind of keep this short and outline to you um, just some just some minor issues that I thought we had. So uh, let's see if I can find it. I think it is earlier. Yeah, right here. So this was a great play design on offense. And, and I know I've kind of been ragging on the team a bit, though, so far. Uh, but but this play design was great, and I don't know why we didn't do this more often, uh, wh which was this kind of play action type play calling. So I, I don't really know what formation this is. This is uh, looks like eleven personnel. Uh, so what that means is we have a running back here, we have a tight end here, kind of lined up as a lead blocker, uh, and then we got wide receiver, wide receiver, 
wide receiver. This is this is actually Amari Jones lined up as a wide receiver in the slot, uh, but I'll, 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 I'll go into that later. He's actually the main target of this play. And what the play is going to be is it's going to... Tulane is going to sell the play action uh, play to, I, th- I believe this is Hutterson, right up the middle. Uh, and this guy is going to pretend to be a lead blocker. Um, and so Tulane sells that really well. Um, he's going to fake the handoff to Hutterson right up the middle, Pratt. And then that leaves Amari Jones just completely wide open on this little crossing route here for a nice game. And... This was just excellent. Like I said, this was excellent play design. So Amari Jones is going to come out. He's lined up in the slot. And what happens here is this this linebacker who, if it was a pass, his job was to cover Jones. But what happens instead is that, sorry, he gets duped by the play action here with Pratt and Hutterson. So he's just going to let Jones fly right past him. And so that leaves Jones wide open for this pass. Uh, And so, like I said, great play design by Will Hall and Fritz to uh, keep the linebackers off of him. And, I mean, he's just running a simple little crossing route here. He breaks the tackle. Look at that. He gets up. He's hyped for the first down. Hey, me too. Me too, Amari. I'm I'm hyped for the first down too. He gets that pick up, you know. Um... And this is just really great creativity uh, by by Will Hall, lining up a running back in the slot like that and making the first down. Uh, So anyways, guys, that was just a a quick overview of some of the plays, uh, important plays I wanted to highlight against SMU that we had this week. Um, Let me know if you want to see more of these game reviews, game film reviews. I'm more than happy to do them. Uh, I find them really enjoyable. Uh, and I think it's it's really good to understand this team on a, on a more technical level. So uh, I'll see you guys later.